Hello and welcome to episode 12 in Ultra HD. <laughs> <laughs> testing We've out gone our, up in the market. <laughs> testing out our new mic system um, oh. and hopefully we have a much more slicker uh, podcast for you to listen to. Yeah. So this is Mortgage Mythbusters with me, Paddy and Baz. Hey, Barry, hello. Last week uh, we covered off, uh, it was pod number 12. Um, and we myth busted that you don't need income protection. Um, and that was it. You just don't need income protection. Not necessarily just when you get a mortgage, but you just don't need it. Um, how did you find last week? Faz joined us last mm. week. Yeah, it was good. Informative. You, you, when you say you don't need it, you do need it, but you're not forced to have it, is the outcome really, isn't it? Mm. You're not. It's not a legal requirement the way it is with, sort of your car insurance before you go on the road yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, I think again, went home. The only person I ever talked to is the wife and we had a bit of crack and she's a teacher. So she gets, I think it's six months or whatever, sick pay. But as we know, some things don't last for just six months. Especially and, in that profession. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stressful profession. Although most of us think the teachers do nothing. It's very stressful job you know everyone thinks it, it's the whole thing what's, of the what's work the, what's the husband three, think yeah. of that what's the, what, 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 what do i think yeah uh, well i tell her she doesn't really <laughs> do much doesn't have a stressful job but i know she does yeah it's yeah. it's yeah it is really stressful job and to be fair shout out to them because when we did it when we were homeschooling it's the worst thing we've ever had to do i think that's the hardest thing ever um and to do it with 30 kids uh, it's crazy but yeah, so we've reassessed it. First thing I did after that was probably get in contact with you and say we need to have a look at what cover I, I've got I, and I, reassess when, it. When we were talking, I could tell because <laughs> I kept saying, I, I was, Faz is very for it. Um, mm. And because of the military background where you don't need it because you get paid, mm. um, it does rub off. And, and the guys in the military do take that kind of view when they get the next job. Mm. They think, oh, I'm never off and I just get paid. But what they didn't realise is actually there was times when they were in rehab or whatever. Mm. Um, and... I think it is one of those, and I kept saying that actually you're going to be, you'll get yourself back to work if you break your leg, you have an in, and then I kept covering off saying mm. like stress, anxiety, depression, which I could see when you were thinking not that that was something that you were going through, but it's it's just right well, in that prevalent, it's prevalent, prevalent at the minute with everyone. And I could just see you thinking, going, act, but that is a risk because it won't pay out on critical illness, you won't yeah. Life and it, it, but income protection was the gap, and mm. I could see your brain ticking, mm. thinking, I need that. <laughs> but it's it's stressful at the minute for everyone, no matter how old you are, no matter who you are. But just, then, just imagine though, if if people did listen to the pod last week, and and like I say, I'm not, I I don't go shouting for it. We don't publicise mm. it. We 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 will be sensible when we're looking at someone's mortgage application. But you walked away thinking, educated, mm. I need it. It's weird for me because it it goes through stages of like this podcast. Of, it's kind of like the joke is I get educated because I don't know much. But I get first stages panicked. So we're doing the pod and I'm like, shit, what's like, I'm going to have to think of this and we have to think of that. Have I got that? Why? We didn't do it that way. Then I go home and I probably then stress out Elner as well. Then we think about it. Then we'll get back in contact with you and you'll say, yeah, but the good thing is you're thinking about it now. You wouldn't have been thinking about it. Yeah. And we'll check it and get you sorted with stuff. And so it's, it's not saying that we are like, this guru to, you know, life changing things. But if people listen to this, one person listens to it and thinks, I'll get myself covered. Yeah. You've done your job, haven't you? Yeah, for you, but it's um, you, you. Well, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's me. But you know what I mean? If, if it has a, no, a, a knock on effect, I think it's like everything. It's like, unless, sometimes unless you have things rammed down your throat, you don't think about them. But the other thing is, it can put you off. But thinking about that's it, it. You can see but, but if I'd so said to you if me, it, it, today, balance, I expected to come into you, and I did have it. I had it written down, I, mm. and I was going to ask you the question: So, do you need income protection? Mm. And you've already answered that you you freely do, even yeah. though you get paid for six months yeah. when you're off sick. You still yeah. know that after that, there's a period where it mm. the shit would have hit the fan. Well, I just think that it, it it's all a risk, obviously, but then and a gamble. But you're also you're putting a time limit on something that hasn't happened that you don't know what it's going to be mm -hmm. and you can't really put a time limit on it. But it's my so If you'd have said no, I've still done my job because you mm. would have went away and went, I've thought about it, mm. I've learned a lot and you know what, 
I don't need it. But that must be frustrating that sometimes you know that it is the thing. It would be the same when you... When I think you're... it's people's risk attitude, isn't it? So mm. the same person who might say no might might be well-educated enough to about their own circumstances to think they've factored that into the house they're buying. Mm. So what I mean is you're very cautious. So yeah. you, you, you might be able... Like if I put your incomes together on paper, I might be able to get you a mortgage for 500 grand mm. and you'd go... Not a chance, I don't mm. want that. You could afford it because the lender mm. will give you the money, but you're sensible enough to co- co- rein it back in. Now, if you had taken that risk, and there's nothing wrong with that because people mm. can afford it and therefore let's take it, but you can afford it now. You've almost, yep. you probably build in a buffer to yourselves and probably have money at the end of the, the, the mm. month in your bank because you just you don't know if the tire's going to burst and you mm-hmm. can't. Oh, that's me. And, that's me all over. Yeah. And then yeah. there's the opposite of people thinking, actually, it's a week till payday. Mm. I've got nothing left in the bank, but I'll just use my credit card. Mm. Nothing wrong with that either. That's what they're for. It's two different types of people mm. um, and it's two different types of risks. So there's nothing wrong with someone saying, I don't need it. The person that does need it is the person that's income stops immediately and they haven't got bags of savings when they're off sick. Someone who's got a six month buffer because they'll get paid if they're off sick. I think that is income protection. It's mm. brilliant that your employer would give you that benefit. Yeah, yeah. But you're right, it could be a bigger gap, and there is. And those three that aren't covered by a critical illness, the stress, anxiety, depression, and there's other things, bad backs, you know, um, just a bad back for mm. a year. Like, you could be off your feet for a year. But the other thing is, I know when Faz was talking and he was saying that, so say the worst happened and you couldn't go back to work after you say two-year period, yeah. but you could, you know... You, you could be able to get a, a different job doing it. Then. Adapt. The kind of way that I thought of it was like, if this is the job you're doing now while you're healthy, this is probably the best job you can get at the time. Yeah. But what if you're then incapacitated, surely you won't, you won't be able to go out there and get a job which is as good as when you're at your peak. So like I was no, kind of thinking, well, it depends, so it's a, it's it depends on what it is. It? Like mm. if you got, it, there is, so let's say I was a hairdresser, mm. um, but my, obviously not, <laughs> but my injury, <laughs> you'd be surprised. Judging by that barnet. Hey, I've got Go a on. great story yeah, about Afghanistan and, and oh, yeah. thin, right. thin and scissors. Yeah. Whole six months just cut me out with thin and scissors. Is that right? Yeah. My barber didn't All like right. it when I got back like <laughs> What's uh, what right? That's a, it's another I'm thing. I'm uneducated that's, on a lot of things, what, but that's I need a story to know what thin are. Yeah, we'll do a podcast sure. on it. No, that, that's one for a pint. Right. That. <laughs> oh, is that right? Oh, is this not so, right? Okay. So anyway, what was my point? Um, I don't know. So you're a hairdresser, yeah. you injure your hand, but mm-hmm. actually, you know what? You'll never be able to use your hand in the mm-hmm. same way because it's a really bad break and therefore you can't grip the scissors the same way mm-hmm. and you can't do your job. Yep. For two years, you can have the income protection payout, but after that, it's going to stop. Or if you've taken it for life, then technically you could, mm. you know, if you are always going to be off work. There's different types of policies depending upon price where it would be specific to that job or working at all. So that that would mean that they would say, well, yes, your hand is mm-hmm. damaged and you can't go back to work as a hairdresser, but you can go back as a uh, working in a, in a supermarket. Mm. Um, the difference in the income drop can be protected. Yeah. So for how long though? For, it depends on the, when you've taken the policy and the length of the policy and the quality of the policy. But but like if as was, I know he did his example was over a two year mm-hmm. period that would only be protected for the two years. It depends on the policy you took. So if you took own occupation, then you'll be protected forever. If you just took any occupation, that would cover you for things mm-hmm. like well you can't get out of bed, you've got a really bad illness, mm-hmm. loss of sight. Um, but the the situation or the the example I've given with the hairdresser is where the, you can't do that skill mm-hmm. anymore. And that is horrific because if you've got stress, yeah, yeah. anxiety, and depression, yeah. going, going back to work as a teacher isn't going to fix it. No. no. So you're probably going to take a, a reduced amount of hours mm. um, and that is you getting back into work. So that's why you don't just want to take an income protection policy because you've clicked the box and ticked it. You need to speak to an advisor mm. to be able to say, what are the instances where by, and we will, and especially me, I will not talk you out of it, but question you mm. and make sure you do need it because... And it, What's the point of you having something that you're never going to yeah, use? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just... The, the thing that I, we should have maybe said last time is it, it's not just getting injured, obviously, at work. Yeah. This is You could be injured doing anything or you yeah, could be yeah. off work for any. So it could even be after you've had a kid, if you're really struggling or you've got a postnatal depression or something like that and you can't go back to work, it would cover that kind of thing yeah, because yeah. it's a... It's a, a an, an Ill, well, not an illness, but a disability in yeah, effect. Of course, yeah. Right, okay. So it's just like, it's there to protect your income. Mm. That's what it is. 
simple. But it doesn't. Yeah, my my point is like for someone who's uneducated and it like me is it doesn't have to. It's not a workplace injury or anything yeah. like that or workplace stress. It could be stress at yeah. any level that's put in. So, so if you think about it, for when an employer covers your pay for six months, mm. they're taking a huge risk because mm. they're, they're kind of betting on you not being off ill. Um, and if you are, then they're going to pay you, you, mm. you for six months. So they're not necessarily taking... You can take policies on your staff and of yep. course workplaces can take them. But that's a huge benefit to give because, yeah, like the odd day here and there, everyone will be off sick. Um, but then you've got times where someone could be off sick for six months and you, mm. you can't do anything about it. And if you've got that benefit built into their contract, then that's a lot of money to pay, half a salary mm. per year. Um, and it's the, and at the end of the day... Well, looking it's good peace of mind having it. Like, but looking at it from outside, yeah. if that's there, why not use it? If you're, It's yeah. not like you're pulling sickies. That is there. And as long as it's proven and it's, it's real... Yeah. Well, why put yourself well, in the ground because of it but this is it you're going to put yourself in the ground by going back to work mm. because you need the money because especially stress anxiety depression mm. if you don't have an income coming in you're, you're suddenly going to be a lot worse mm. because you're worrying about financials as well as what, whatever the original problem but was. it's a natural thing that's inbuilt in most people isn't it yeah. that you you will do whatever you can it's, to not take the easy option and yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, you're you're an easy target for because I know mm. you as a person is like kind of where you are on that risk mm. scale. Um, but actually, I don't think anyone could listen to that podcast last week and not see the value in it. Mm. It's I'm happy for them to agree that fifty quid a month is just something they'd rather put into a savings yep. account or spend enjoying their life. That's okay. Mm. I, I'm 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 also for that too. But I wouldn't like them to do it because they thought that they didn't need it. Mm. Everyone should agree that they need it. The yeah. only people who don't is the military because they will get paid while they're off sick mm -hmm. um, and the military will do the damn best to get them better. Right. They also can't have a policy, so you can't sell an income protection policy to someone in the but military But they're, anyway. they're not covered for life, are they? Well, there would be, eventually they would be probably medically discharged, which would involve a payout on a scale. Oh, okay. So right. X amount. So of course, yeah, they're not going to be covered for life, correct. But if they do get medically discharged, there could be a pensionable benefit. Okay. There could be a claim because you yeah. don't know why they're off sick. That's um, another thing. I take it when you're off sick in the military, you're being paid. Are you still getting paid into your pension as well? Yeah. 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 You don't contribute yourself, but it's a it's a non-contributional mm. pension because... Um, Is it? Too right. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's not many out there that you don't even... It doesn't even come off your pay slip. I mean, you could argue that they don't get paid enough and mm. it, it gets put in that way. It's a backhander. Um, absolutely but yeah mm, so yeah, yeah. it's just interesting because I honestly big I mean, thing isn't it? I don't have income protection mm. it's the one thing that I don't have and I'm self-employed there is a risk there's a lot of money can still be made when I'm not mm. at my desk and I'm ill it's happened before uh, I had two months off in 2000 I've got staff that earn me money so yeah. that situation they are my income mm. protection um but it's still, I, I'm, I'm still a, an employee of my company. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot on the IT side, as you know. I do a lot on the marketing side, the social media side. So mm. when I can't do that, there is, a, there is a drop of income. It's hard to measure for a policy like that. So the reason I don't have it is I need what, what's, what's called a buffer, a war chest for times yeah. where I need to be thinking, right, that's going to drop. When it's more serious, like cancer, heart attack, stroke, I need to be stepping away and putting someone in this chair, and that's where critical illness came mm. into it. And we'll cover that in a separate policy. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll probably bring Joe back into that mm. one. Um, so, moving on to today's myth, which is quite a good one. Uh, a very common myth that we get asked even during the appointment, but it's you don't need a mortgage until you found a property. Now, that what, what we'll mean, we'll go into that, but I'll repeat that. So you don't need a mortgage until you found a property. I don't want that to be interpreted as in you would never you would have a mortgage in place and start paying it first, then buy a property. That's not what we mean. What we're saying is we you need to have a mortgage sorted and agreed in principle before you go house hunting. Right. So first question straight away is what do you secure it on then? But it's that you don't. So in principle means it's think of it as like a gift certificate. To mm -hmm. say that you can get a mortgage. I'll go back to the... Yeah, night. but you say... So, right. So, so we haven't got... You haven't got a mortgage. You're not paying it per yeah. month. But what you have is, in principle, a bank. Bank mm -hmm. of Barry has said, come to us, answer these questions, and I'm, in principle, subject to the property, mm -hmm. going to give you a mortgage, and it's going to be 90 grand, and it'll be £400 a month, 
And if you've got a deposit of 10, that means you can go and then buy a property at 100 grand. Right. So Barry so, has said, I promise you, when you go and find that property, as long as I agree that that property is worth 100,000 uh pounds, -huh. I'll lend you 90. So we're looking around. Yeah. I come to you. We'll get a mortgage in, print, in principle. Is it agreement in principle? Yeah. Right. I see a house that I fall in love with, which is 110 grand. Yeah. You haven't got a mortgage then, then have you? No. So what? So, so what? you need to do two things. You need to increase your mortgage if it's possible to 100 because you've got 10 grand. So would you go back to, because they've already got all the facts about you. So he is, let, we'll go back a massive step. Mm -hmm. So the reason to bust this myth is some people do what you do and go, right move, love it. I think I can, I can afford it because I've mm -hmm. done a quick calculator and it's 700 quid a month. I can afford £700 a month because I'm paying that in rent. I can, I can. Let's put an offer in on the property. The person selling that property could say, yeah, accept your offer. Mm -hmm. You're then expected to instruct the solicitor and buy that property. You need to do that in form of cash or cash and a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And now you can just mortgage. use a mortgage with mm -hmm. 100%. cents. Now, the difficulty there is you're on the back foot because you're now coming to us and saying, I found a property, which being honest, out of our first time buyers, two to three of them have probably already committed to that point. The rest of them may have already committed to the point where they've booked a viewing, but they haven't yet put an offer in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they put the pressure on us because we, we need a mortgage. We've, we've, we've had our offer accepted on this property. We've never heard, never seen this customer before. Yeah. And we're on the back foot. The pressure's on, but the pressure's on to two people, them and the person selling it and the estate agent because they've agreed and, and potentially planning their life around selling that property for that price to this couple, mm. yeah? So they come to us and say, can I get a mortgage? <laughs> you, well, I hope so mm. because you've already committed to buying the property. What you should be doing is doing your research before. And this is busting the myth. Yep. So you're wrong. What you should be doing is you should be coming to us before and say... We're thinking about buying a property. We've seen a few that we like. We've done our own research and we think that property's within our remit. Not just in your remit and within your budget. You want to know if that lender mm. will let you have that mortgage in the first place. A few reasons they can't is age, employment criteria, income criteria, mm -hmm. affordability, expenditure. And then the other things like credit history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they all don't tick the box then the lender might say, no, yes, there's another lender and another lender and another lender. Mm -hmm. But eventually then pool of lenders could run out. And it might be that the affordability doesn't quite fit. So now you're in a position where you've had your offer accepted. You, you need a mortgage, but it's a bit short. So that scenario you've, you've given me there. You've bought one at 110, mm -hmm. got a bit carried away. You can only get a mortgage at 90. You suddenly need 20, but mm. you've only got 10 in your bank. So then it's, well, Paddy, can you get us a bigger mortgage? Mm. That might be knocking on your employer's door and saying, I think I deserve a pay rise. Can I right. have a pay rise? It might be that you have to now scrim and scrape, sell cars, sell property, sell assets, sell whatever to create that extra deposit to be able to do mm -hmm. it. Repay debt, repay car finance, whatever's causing the affordability issue. And that's where we're on the back foot then because we're problem solving yeah, yeah. as opposed to giving you the opportunity. So what I like to say to my customers is when you've come to us, I'm going to give you the ability to, to daydream on right move realistically. So you can set your parameter on right move at 120 mm -hmm. because you're looking at properties for 110. That's what I was going to say. Is it worth, would you advise them to go higher just to, in case? Or, well, you know, if you're getting a bidding war. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, these do. So not, not necessarily. <clears throat> what they need to know is what they can afford. And that's the budget. They can't go above that mm -hmm. because that is it. It doesn't mean that they can't bid on a property higher and say, I can only go to this. Would you accept my offer? That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um but obviously they're gonna what they can't do is just look at properties for 110 on right move because the 115 property, it might be on there for three mm. months and they'll actually take 110 if they ask. Mm. So there's no harm. Yeah. You, there's, you can ask and they can say no. But I can at least set their parameters for them on right move so that they're not getting carried away. Yeah. And then what they're looking at is 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 achievable. Then when they ring the estate agent and say, Hi, can I view this property? The majority of estate agents out here do and should do refuse to allow someone to view the property until they've got proof of funds, cash or a mortgage and, and cash. Yeah, an agreement yeah. in principle. Well done, but you're learning yeah, about it, aren't you? Uh, do you know what else it can be called, an agreement in principle? AIP. AIP, which I've is seen agreement in principle. Yeah. What about it? What, <laughs> um, what are the other ones? Agreement in um, 
Offer? No? Offer. Is it an offer? Or decision is that in principle? Decision in principle. Yeah. Right, Mortgage yeah. in principle. So MIP, DIP and AIP. Are they the same thing? Same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so why do you call them different things? Because you've got... We, we just match system. whatever. The customer comes in and says, I need a MIP, I need a mortgage in principle. Yeah, we'll get you one of them. We don't correct them and say... This, it's just, no, but on your... You call it an agreement in principle, but on the system, it's DIP. Um, just, what's that to, to be fair, an agreement in principle is, is an agreement in principle. That's what it is. It's mm. an agreement in principle for a mortgage. But some people just call it mortgage yeah. in principle. It's one of them. them like yeah, in the yeah, yeah, but... And like... Lenders, we call it a dip. We're going to dip it. That's mm-hmm. what we say. All right. We're going to dip it. So we'll pr- pass it to get a decision. Lenders are so cool, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we say we're going to dip a decision yeah. in principle. Yeah. Um, but that certificate might only be valid for three months, one month, two months. So in effect, that, that is the hardest part of your job, isn't it, as an advisor? Is getting the getting the mortgage in print, the decision in principle, isn't it? Yeah. Is that the biggest work no, you don't have to do? Do you know what? No, that's the that's that's the only bit we can't control. Is you could be perfect, and the lender could still say no because you haven't just got enough credit score. But you've had to do all the doggy work. You've had to do all the fact finding, all the checks before yeah. then. Do you know what? It's it's our job. That's that's probably the easy bit is putting in data mm. and using our expertise to be able to give advice. So the hard work comes with the process because it's stressful and it's yeah. supporting and then it's dealing with the underwriters, dealing with the solicitors. Um, but yeah, in principle, pardon the pun, <laughs> that when we get that milestone out of the way, the lender will give you a hundred grand. Yeah. Happy days. And because in principle, that is subject to, because imagine this, Baz, you, you've come to me and said, I'm on 30 grand a year, yeah. but actually you were just bad at maths and you didn't get it right. Um, and you, you were only on 28 yeah. grand a year. When we submit, because we don't submit papers, pay slips, bank statements at that stage. Right. So when it comes to nitty gritty, there might it could be, be gambling on a bank statement okay. when it comes yeah, through. So, yeah. I mean, we'll ask all these questions in prep. But I take it. But that's what in principle is. The caveat for the lender yeah. and the security for them is, yes, you can have a hundred grand subject to the valuation. So the property's not falling down. Or it's mm. not, you're not trying to buy a tree house. Your bank statements are well conducted mm-hmm. and your pay slips add up to what they say they, are, they do. So this is going to, I know they say there's no such thing as a stupid question, but this might sound like a stupid question, but let us get it out, right? So yeah. agreement in principle or a dip or a MIP, a hundred grand, right? So the the lender knows that they're going to be getting 150 grand, say, back. Yeah. I know that's, but just for simple figures. So with all the interest and stuff, they've given me an agreement in principle Turns out I got the house for 90 grand. Mm-hmm. So I I now need less to lend less from them. Yeah. Will they still, I take it they're fine with that, yeah. it, but they're we going get, to be getting get, less money get back. Asked that Do you know what I mean? And, it, and what then causes the problem is people think, oh, I'm still going to get 100. I've managed to get this property for a lot less than I expected. I can now use that money to do the bathroom. No. All oh, right. So the, you can't. It's, it's a percentage base. So yet yeah, on, on a, on a, um, if you had 10 grand mm-hmm. and you were now buying a property um, that you thought was worth 110 and you've managed to get it for 100 mm-hmm. and you had a mortgage in principle for 100, you only need a mortgage now of 90. But you might want to mm-hmm. keep that cash back. So you could technically get a 95% mortgage, keep five in your bank and get a 95 mortgage because you've been agreed. The key part is up to 100. You could go and buy a property for 50 grand. That doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You still need to put that deposit down unless you're qualifying for the 100% mortgage scheme then you would need to be in a position where you'd have to still at least have five percent yeah right whereas it's difficult the other way around but yeah, yeah. properties do you can yeah but what i was meaning though so so say so we give you a blank check to go to shopping for a house hmm. yeah and it says 100 grand bars off you go hmm. 100 grand plus whatever's in your bank mm-hmm. savings yeah, yeah, yeah. for or deposit yeah, yeah, yeah. or from the equity from your sale because mm-hmm. that could be you. Yeah. yeah yeah that is your allowance to go and find your next property but if you come back with a lower price property and mm-hmm. have it agreed then the, the discussion there is do we use less deposit and keep some back for doing home improvements mm-hmm. or if the property is you're really able to walk into it and it's already decorated and literally you, all you need to do is put your knives and forks away yeah you can then still put a bigger deposit and have a smaller mortgage which will mean lower monthly payments. yeah and are they or would would that they're fine with that yeah. that's all yeah yeah because I was just sort of thinking of it from Baz Bank point of view, where it's like, I'm I'm lending them less, so I'm going to get less back. No, do you know no. what I mean? I know it sounds yeah, weird, I mean, but like to, to be honest, it, it, there's another little problem 
that can cause with the estate agents because you mm-hmm. kind of go in with this blank check that says 100 grand. Yeah. And if you're looking at properties at 70 and putting off an offers in at 68, mm. then technically you've shown your hand. You've said I can afford mm. 100. Just because the bank's willing to lend you it doesn't mean that you have to take it, nor mm. does it mean that you're happy to pay the payments yeah. for the 100 grand. Yeah. So when customers sometimes don't want to show that figure, we say there's nothing we can do. We can't manipulate mm. and put less income in to generate a lower amount. No, you know, but, um, no, but what? But they don't have to tell the estate agent that, do they? Well, the certificate sometimes does disclose how much they can borrow. Obviously, it has to show them that so, they can so borrow. Going back to this, yeah. this isn't a thing you have to show. Yeah, when you, you have, have to show the estate agent that you can you can purchase the property that you want to buy. Or, or absolutely, but not to just go and have a look at it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you wouldn't want people walking around your house mm. looking to buy. No, you're without, right. But without, I don't. I don't remember doing that. It's like Bethlehem didn't it didn't used to happen. Uh, oh, right, okay. COVID made it happen because we didn't. They didn't want you had to be serious about something, mm. and to show you were serious, they made you go and get an agreement in principle. Some estate agents have always done it quite rightly. Mm-hmm. Um, what you shouldn't be done is what shouldn't happen is you'd be told to be pre-qualified again if you've already got one. Mm-hmm. If it expires, it's a click of a button to get it done. Obviously, we update and mm-hmm. make sure that you nothing's changed. You haven't lost your job. Yeah. Um, but it's a simple thing. To me, it is something, but it doesn't mean, this is what will blow your mind. We get it, Halifax. Mm-hmm. There's your agreement in principle. Baz, go and buy your house. Had an mm-hmm. offer accepted. Here's my proof of mortgage. Mm-hmm. When you come to us, Nationwide might have brought out brilliant rates and mm-hmm. they will lend you the same amount of money. We don't just stick with Halifax because we've got a certificate. We mm-hmm. would move to a new certificate and then go to application with Nationwide. And there's no obligation with you to go with them then? There's no obligation to no. go with your first lender? No, because, I mean, if you did it today... Went and viewed a house tonight and came back tomorrow and said, I want to submit my application. Here's all my documents. Then probably would stay with the same lender. But if you imagine, mm. they take turns could be, competing. Yeah, could be, yeah, yeah, could so be a long time. we're not going to just go ahead. Also, mm. so let's say it's a brand new build flat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've got a 10% deposit. If we had an agreement in principle for you with Nationwide. Mm. Yeah. And it was for 90%. Yep. And, you, and you went shopping and I found this. Oh, a flat. Didn't think about buying an mm-hmm. apartment, but I've, here we go. Let's let's get into it. Nationwide don't actually lend past eighty five percent on flats, so that certificate doesn't actually qualify you right. for that property. So you'd have to come back to us. We'd redo the advice, and then we'd look at NatWest. So why why I know it's, it's just each lender has why. the criteria. So why don't would you have less... so much on flats? Someone why is that? Um, probably overexposed in the past, so they probably lent a lot to flats in mm. the past. And when they look at their whole mortgage book, so Bank of Barry's lent all this cash out. Where is it? Few on mansions, happy days. Mm-hmm. Few on flats. Few on properties that are um, in an area where the economy is going downhill, mm-hmm. therefore losing value. And then there's some that are thriving. And then mm. there's some that are for um, holiday lets, buy to lets, things like that. But if they've got a large bunch on apartments and flats, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a big turnover on those. And also a lot of those can end up being let out. Um, because apartments are like a stepping stone mm-hmm. in, in, in the property ladder. If you're a landlord, it's well uh, documented and statistically correct that your tenant turnover is quick because right. you, you move into a flat for your first house. Yeah. I did it. And very quickly you outgrow that, especially yeah, you get yourself family, on your feet and get yourself. Pets, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to want to garden. You're going to want to move mm. out. So it's kind of something. So if as a tenant, you'll be in there, but then you'll even need, you'll need a garden. You'll need a house. Okay. And, and that's just how it happens. So flats have always been deemed higher risk. Certainly right. for um, not, not necessarily in London. We've done a ground floor flat that mm-hmm. wasn't even big enough to get a mortgage with one lender. We had to move it to another. It, it, the square footage wasn't big enough for the lender yet. It was 500 grand. Tottenham postcode, unreal. That's a you put that into into Durham, mm. it's ninety grand flat, but it was it was location, yeah. So flats notoriously have it's, just have just crazy, never, never gone up in value. Mm. It's like Northern Ireland. You look at Northern Ireland house prices now. I share them a lot on social media. Mm. Yeah, is like that the ones that where they're at? For four hundred yeah. grand, you can get a mansion. I don't the like property to, prices over there. Are just crazy. I don't like to click on it and get all the details because it's just, just you look the, at them and you just think like yeah, that's. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, a lot, a lot's been said, and a lot is always said about how overpriced certain areas are and how yeah. underpriced certain areas what, are. But it's, it's, what it's what you, what you can afford, what you want, what you pay. I mm. couldn't live in London 
in, mm. in a house the same value as mine no. and, and be happy because it would be a box room. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Um, and that's just the way of life. But things have changed and mm. it is changing. The, 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 it's a bit like the, the worry with valuation when property prices is going down will always be a national thing. Mm. Yeah. And overall, it probably will kind of plateau and then drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quite rightly, they've shot up for a while, mm -hmm. and then, but then over the next 10 years, they'll definitely go back up. It's it always goes up. That's just how the economy works. But it'll be heightened in London because people don't work in London anymore. Yeah. They all work remotely. They don't need to be living and commuting so close. That, what do you think house prices are dropping in London? I think they will. I think they were overpriced. Just my personal opinion. Mm. But if you well, think massively about, overpriced for what they are compared exactly, to I mean, else, it, yeah. Just that one example. Yeah, Tottenham yeah. Road... Like, mm. Yeah, I mean, yes, you've got access to the tube mm. and you're right in the middle of London, but that's it. I'm, mm. I'm right in the middle of London if I want to Zoom somebody. Mm. Um, and, th and I think the problem is that the way the media will interpret the, the this dismay of those who bought the 500 grand mm. house that's now worth 470, they'll class that as 30 grand horrific prices. Yeah. Rocket, whereas over in the Northeast, mm. over in Darlington, Sunderland, house prices will keep climbing mm. and will be buzzing. We're doing well. Cumbria shot up in price because a lot of people went, why would I want to live in a city in a in a in a really urban built After up COVID area? is actually COVID, when they yeah. when they saw that how Yeah, like your space home is a castle. Such, and I'm not yeah. slagging off other areas. I'm not meaning to do no. that. But what I mean is that definitely not Sunday. When a lender when a lender has their book, so the Bank of Barry looks at what yeah. they've lent on, historically nationwide the biggest building society, fifteen million customers, yeah. they probably have a lot of flats on their book. Mm. So to reduce the amount of flats they have on the book Bigger, bigger percentage criteria. Um, so we had one yesterday. It was tier two um, visas. So someone coming into the country, tier two visa, both doctors, that only lived in the country for 18 months. And in t 24 months, they would qualify for a Barclays mortgage with 10% subject to other criteria. At 20, not at, in another at, 24 months, at 24 in, months. Okay. At the 24 month point, yeah, yeah, six months. Before that, Today, mm -hmm. so six months away from their, their two-year anniversary of mm -hmm. their visa, um, lenders would need 25% commitment. They choose that criteria based on other things that I'm not even qualified to understand. 25% deposit? Yeah. Whereas in six months' time, they'll only need 10% with Barclays. Mm -hmm. Still, the others would kind of sit at 15. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, they sit and have a meeting and decide upon this. Like, what do you, should we do this? Mm -hmm. So you'll like this one, footballers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much are they on a week? Mm. For for even a, a Sunderland player, what's your top wage? I don't know now what it would be. You're probably still looking like well within the well tens and t tens of thousands of pound a week. Yeah. So if, I, if you're getting half a million a year, mm. yeah. So am I going to give you a mortgage times four point five? Mm. So am I, am I going to let you borrow two million pounds? Mm. Boom, just like that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. So they have, a, they have a cut off point. Am I going to do it? But that's for the profession because a mm. footballer can only earn that for 10, yeah, exactly, 15 yeah, years. Yeah. But the thing is, a footballer is a business now. Mm. An individual footballer is a brand. Mm. It's a, so who's to say that they don't build a brand like Beckham did? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, so I yeah. mean, obviously not everyone can do it, but they could go into coaching. But when I work for going back in the days of Northern Rock, they had a professional sportsman range. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Applegarth, who owned Northern Rock at the time, Big guy, mm -hmm. he, he was great. He used to let me cut away for my rugby training at Gateshead. Um, he had Graham Onions in from Durham. Mm -hmm. I sat training him and he was just there to support him while he was getting good at cricket. He was massive into his sports. So their criteria met this, the footballers. Right. So basically, if you were a footballer, your contract could get you a big mortgage. Mm. Um, whereas now, lenders would take a more like, mm -hmm. sensible approach. And mm -hmm. go, right, okay. I mean, bear in mind, footballers, that they'll, they'll get taxed half of that. They mm -hmm. do. There is a yeah, 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 taxing yeah. system. Um, the clubs aren't daft. That's why they get paid so much. Yeah. They want the money in the bank, don't they? Mm. Uh, the player. Um, but yeah, so the criteria, not every lender will be lending to a premiership footballer, regardless of the amount of money they've got. Because the risk on the, compared to their salary, mm. to your salary, mm. your salary, it's more likely you're going to earn that salary or a little bit more for the mm. rest of your life. Because all you need is a bad injury. All you need is a bad injury as a footballer and then no yeah, one to imagine, touch Imagine their income protection. Mm. Yeah, yeah they, they literally get insured for limbs, and not you can't just do it. You can't just do it for a policy like us for footballers. It's, no, it's turn up to Lloyd's in London and say, "Really, here's Barry." 
they'll test you and say, yeah, we'll insure that leg for this. Be like a proper physical work. Yeah, but you'd like be paying, proper... you'd be paying yeah. two grand of that salary a week to cover your insurance for your like your leg. Yeah. And and how many footballers can play like Ronaldo's playing mm. whatever age and he's not injured. Yeah. So he could have paid a policy out and he will have a guarantee. Yeah. Mm, he and massive staff policy. things of like mm. celebrities insuring parts of the body and that. Mm. Um, it's just made us glad that I'm not very good at football. Yeah, well, this is why I've decided is. not to be a professional rugby yeah. player. Exactly. Because I knew it would yeah. be difficult to get a mortgage. Out. See, yeah, it's easier ways to make money, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, can you, what I'm yeah, no, it's, is, un, it's, so it's, it's interesting. Like, it's has it? criteria mm. and so it's not just about that certificate. So for all I'm, all for busting this myth and saying, mm. no, you need to come to us first to get the certificate. That certificate isn't an open check for every property. It's for mm. you. It's saying, Barry can have this mortgage mm. depending on the property he picks. So if you go to buy a property that is maybe it's made of logs, Norwegian yeah. logs, not every lender would have that as a typical security. Right. So you, even timber frame properties, all this mm -hmm. like lenders. So when you're shopping, unless the estate agent is clued up enough to understand the mortgage criteria mm -hmm. to what lenders would lend. And unless they have a background in in mortgages, they're probably not going to, or a mortgage advisor in house, because sometimes that certificate, they come back and go, ah, oh, this property, we're going back to the drawing board. Not mm -hmm. every person has the ability. So go back to the self-employed people to look at every lender. So imagine if this Halifax certificate didn't exist for that type of property. Yeah. Um, it was an old school property with thatched roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not every lender likes a thatched roof, so we might have to pull away from Halifax. He's self-employed with a quirk, one year's yeah. accounts. There's not many lenders do one year's accounts, so now I've only got a few to choose from. What if those three don't mm -hmm. lend on that thatched roof? Then actually, he can't get a mortgage. So that yeah. in principle, rip it up. So the so the the in principle, the main thing, the main benefit I can see is that. Financially, you've done you you've done your checks. You're doing your stuff beforehand, yeah. And you know how stressful it is moving houses, yeah. unbelievable, and buying the house and everything. You, if you've got all that done beforehand, you're then literally just finding it and getting the. But, but also, you don't know. Done. No one knows what the budget is until they spoke to a professional, mm. whether that's in the bank or here, because even if you're buying cash, you've still got a budget for right. I've got no more cash left. Mm. Uh, how much is it going to be to do this, this, and this? Mm. Um, there's a good story around here of the, the people who won the lottery they bought a house in Eden mm -hmm. million pound mansion beautiful couldn't afford to run it really yeah there was that guy who young lad bought a won the lottery bought a house and all those cars and partied it away couldn't afford to even renovate the place like and, and by scary renovating, isn't actually, it really you each, think each day the boiler room needed doing or whatever mm. the swimming pool needed maintaining like so, like, bringing that back down to just a normal two-bed house to heat it, you know, mm. you've got to think about that. So when you meet with us, we'll talk you through everything. We'll also make you think about protection needs because you might think, I can afford a grand a month, mm. but that's me, breadline. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, yeah. we need to bring you back in. But you might be thinking about a 25-year mortgage. We might look at 35 because you're in the military. You're going to get gratuity. You're going to get mm. all these other options. So when you've sorted your budget with us, we come back to a figure per month that you can afford, mm -hmm. which then translates into a purchase price because we do the rest. When you've spoke to us, you can go away comfortable that- That you know it's- You might have ruled out properties. You might have actually, this is a big one of mine and I love it. Again, me and you are so different on the risk attitude. So you would probably buy a two bed house mm -hmm. when you've had your first child mm -hmm. and you, you, you move into the property. Yeah, two yeah. bed house. Yeah. To me, I'd look with the customer to say, look, well, your budget, you can actually afford to borrow 120 mm -hmm. and that's going to be 60 quid extra a month than the property that was 110 mm -hmm. it has an extra bedroom it's got a garden yeah yeah it's got a garage whatever that extra 10 grand entails and you'll be like no no, no i don't need it mm -hmm. well actually they then have a kid or twins like you do mm -hmm. and you need that extra bedroom then they've got to sell move boom boom and there's money or, COVID, or covid happens and you need somewhere to work COVID happens. yeah 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 mm. so so your your so what i'm saying is that is... we'll be able to look and, and say right you can afford that mm. what else could you afford like you're self-employed and you're a joiner would a garage not be mm. a, a bit of a yeah. money saver because you don't have to use that lock and store where yeah. you're keeping all your tools your tools are probably safe so you would you i'm not saying you, you obviously wouldn't push people to push themselves to the limits kind of thing, but you would say for a bit more 
you could get this, which is well, a lot well, more. If it, so if you came me with a budget of 400 quid a month, hmm. and within 400 quid a month, I could get you a mortgage for higher than you were looking at, hmm. I would talk about it because you don't want someone to be making do to buy a house. It's hmm. not the type of thing. It's not like a car where you think, I just need it to get yeah. A to B. But you will get people like me who B, are... Your A to B on the property ladder is huge. Yeah. You don't want to be in the middle of finding out you're pregnant, your family expanding, yeah. needing to buy a house. Because yeah. guess what? You're suddenly on maternity mm. leave. You know what mm. I mean? So you put yourself in a position. You need to think bigger picture. You should be you buying must, a house for a year. Or you so. must have both things. You'll have people like me that come in that need... To be given the option and to, to, to say, look, you could yeah. do it this way. Look, as we're the professionals. We're telling you, you would be fine doing that. Yeah. But you must get other people that you have to rein back in who are saying, I want that. And you're looking at the bank. Well, thing well, maybe I'm giving you a bit of like, disservice because your your house is huge and it's mm. it's big enough for what... Well, it was what, big enough what, before what it's full of children. Yeah, but I mean, you you, yeah. you, you, mm. you expanded it. You probably wouldn't mind. Yeah, got, yeah, you, yeah. You know, you did, yeah. You've mm. did and, and the, your garden's big and stuff mm. like that. But imagine if you'd have settled for that two up, two yeah. down because mm. you were just going to stay with then mm. you would have had that financial upheaval of moving. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, as we said, it, it's probably on par with having it, a kid, really. Even your house, drive, even really, your drive really... being able to fit, though. Imagine having to park the back, yeah. your, your, your school bus mm. down there. School the... bus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's true. It is true, like. And but, but, but if I'd have had that conversation with you and Elna as yeah. customers at the beginning of this, mm. when you first started, and it made you think that, I'm not, there's nothing salesy about that. No. We actually do get paid more by the banks the bigger your mortgage. Right. But that's yeah, not yeah. my, because I, I make money if you buy a house and then come back a year later, buy another house. I make mm. it twice, don't I? All right, yeah, so course, like, yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to make yeah. money. What I'm trying to do is make you think, mm. um, have you considered this? I'm not saying buy that. A lot, I mean, a majority of my time, mate, I'm trying to bring people down. Mm. Like really, first house five hundred grand, mm. four bedrooms, no kids. Yeah, why do you need that? I just want it. I want a gym. I want this. Mm. Okay, that's that's cool. And they're the ones that will say, "I don't need income protection." Yeah, and it's, yeah, because the car because they've maxed out on everything else. Yeah. So well. you've got it. We've got a responsibility to find that perfect customer um, and and make sure our book, like a lender, that has ten percent of their book on mansions, fifteen percent on flats. We don't want what's called our delinquency rate to be mm. bigger than it should be. That's people that haven't um, paid, that, that have that, defaulted that could, on the mortgage. Yeah, had to hand the keys back, sadly. Yeah. Um, and t- to be honest, I don't know if we've ever had one. Right. That's just fluke. Look. Because, Would you find out? Um, or not? I think, um, I think the data is definitely kept. Um, they wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily tell us because that's a breach of data. Oh, but okay. statistically, the banks could say to us, for every... Five million we've lent, all yeah. of it is being paid um, to you as a by, as by, a... by like by the customers who went in, and then they could give us a rears rate. I'm sure mm. where a default pay. I don't know. Mm. Um, I know certainly as a business development manager, which is the bank's mm-hmm. guy who or girl who comes around yeah. and, and deals with us, sometimes gives us that type of data. But we've never because to be it. honest, as it is a taking yourself as an advisor out of the equation for a second, but as an employer of advisors, mm. it's probably good to know. Because, you, you know, if you had someone in who was a bit of a renegade who was like, oh, I'll get you the best best house ever and they're pushing people too yeah. far, it's probably quite well, a handy I mean, thing to do, know. Do you know what? Really? For one, you're right. you say you wouldn't, but you, who knows? You know, you, you could have, especially when it's peer pressure for family, mm. I want that house, mm. do what you can to get it then of course we're going to do everything, even if they're going beyond what we consider their means. Mm. But we genuinely do think here, would I lend them the money? Yeah. yeah. And, and the banks control it. But we have that other stopgap of Laura who will go through and it happens once a month where a file is put in front of me um, where Laura would disagree with certain aspects of their conduct of the financials mm-hmm. that they might have, we might have to have a chat. And it's not Laura saying, I don't agree with it. It's Laura saying, when the bank sees this and we submit this to the lender, Flagging up what they're it's gonna probably going to decline mm. because I know how HSBC mm. feel about this type of account conduct. Now, that could be gambling. It could be going over your overdraft. It could be anything. It could be just excessive spends on mm. a hobby. Yeah. Um, and we will go back to the drawing board and we'll probably bring the client in for another chat. If, just on a sort of side note there, so if, if you've been rejected in effect, knocked back because of some spending yeah. habit, whatever you've got, does that kind of, is is that, do they remember that? Do they have that on file somewhere for the next time you go? So say you think, all right, we'll, we'll try again in a couple of months or something. Like, would that, 
Yeah, there's a, there is a system I mean? where they will watch it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with someone making themselves, like turning themselves around. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Like you do, mat you mature overnight mm. when you want to get a property. Yeah, of course. Like, uh, people yeah. do come to us with nothing in the bank at the end of the month without a mortgage and we'll get them a mortgage mm. and we'll be conf confident that they would pay mm. because you do your change. It's a responsibility. Mm. They know the risks and you know what? They need that roof mm. over their head. Priorities do change. Um, but just to bust the myth and I'll let you have your three yeah. questions. To bust the myth is barrier houses on the market. Mm -hmm. One customer walks through the door who says, I haven't seen my mortgage broker yet, but I want to put a bid of 150 grand on your house. Another person comes through the door. I've just been to Paddy's. He's scrutinized me. We've had a good chat. I've got proof in my hand that I can afford the mortgage. I offer you 150. Mm. You're happy with... The price of both those bids, who are you going to choose? Yeah, of course. You go for the one that's secure that you know. That Busted you're the miffer. Eh? Yeah. Done. But that's just bank of bars. Bank of bars. If it was a bit renegade like you, you'd be, you'd be just going for the highest <laughs> but, bid. But, but, I mean, don't get us wrong. Um, no, I know. I totally but, get but, it. But, but there's other factors like have you sold your house and, and mm. you're in a chain and, and, and you know, and like sometimes people do genuinely it just want to sell to, to another couple. Like I, I, two people come through and you know you see that family and you want to hand off your house mm. to that perfect family mm. and they might not have had a mortgage agreed yet, but you're going to give them a chance. Of course, yeah. that's going to happen. But in theory, if you think that you need to find a house, then find your mortgage, you're wrong for so many reasons. Yeah. There yeah. might be things like a CCJ park and find on you that you didn't know. And if we go to the bank and find out it's there, we can fix that yeah. so that you can get a mortgage instead of disappointing and probably losing out on the house by going, Ugh. Because the last back. thing you want if you're on a chain as well, if you're selling, yeah. is you don't want it so, to be so put you, back to a month. Of course you can get and find a property mm -hmm. without a mortgage and then do that after. Of course you can. But put yourself a few years in the future when you're selling mm. that house, who you want to come through that door. Someone prepared, mm. someone qualified, i.e. qualified to get a mortgage with evidence to save you time. And when you accept that offer, because bear in mind that for sale sign turns to a sold sign very quickly. Yeah, yeah, you've shown how much you're willing to sell that property for. Mm. So say that it was on for one fifty, and then you accepted at one four five by mm. an unqualified buyer. Then you put it back on the market because they couldn't get a mortgage. Mm. Actually, the next person isn't going to bid one fifty. No. no, they're going to bid one forty five. I mean, obviously. Yeah, but it's, I don't. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, you kind of showing your hand. It's it's all. It's kind of a game, isn't it? A lot of it's kind of. It is. Give us, give us, give us some right. Questions, so right? first of all. If if I know that I'm, we're expecting a kid. No, we're not yep. really. I'm going back. We're definitely not doing that again. But if we were expecting a kid, we need to move. Say we think right. We need to be in before Christmas. So December at the latest we want to be in. How long before I actually go properly looking and getting into it? Should I come to you to get my Great. mortgage? Great question. Just, just in case anyone's tuned into episode 12 for the first time, mm. so that Barry doesn't like children. He just well, has, I, I, he has yeah, four, very, I have my he moments. He has 400 of them. I have four <laughs> children that are very hard work at times, but absolutely lovely at others. Because um, we could totally just snip it. it. For, yeah, for, for, just snip for Christian's 18th <laughs> birthday, but we'll snip that bit and just Barry it over. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> lovely. But yeah, so... Yeah, so, but, so but, great question. When are we... Yeah. It's, uh, it's the end of May. Let's call mm. it beginning of June. Yep. So you come to me, you probably can't get booked in until next week. We mm -hmm. have a chat, yeah? Mm -hmm. So however that chat goes, I'm going to do my research. We're going to have a good feeling mm -hmm. that we've established your budget. Mm -hmm. We're then going to send it over and then you're going to have that time out to be able to consider. Yeah. And then probably the, the night we've finished talking, either you or Elna are going to be straight on right move doing mm. looks looking about. Obviously. Then it's going to be about a week to view a property. You're probably going to view three or four properties, mm -hmm. um, one each week, and then you're going to be in a position to put an offer in. So about a month from seeing me. So that takes us into the beginning of July. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you come to me and say, Paddy, I have to be in before Christmas, I'll say, I'm not going to sign off on that. I'm not going to agree that you will be in, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try my damn best. Mortgage-wise, 28 days, I'll probably have it in a bag ready to go. What? So that's... A month. Mortgage ready get. to go. Yeah. So is that 20, agreement 28, in principle? 28 days. No, you've got, so you've had your no, agreement in principle. So what I'm saying is what, how long does the agreement in principle take? So one, us to do it, mm. um, we'll get ID off you and do it the next day. Yeah. So you'll have. So, you're so I come in today now. Yeah. Right. So, well, say, say a Monday morning, I come in first thing. Yeah. Have a meeting with you. I could probably, get, I could probably get one of the guys to do you 
do your agreement in principle and get you that certificate that day if you came in. Early I thought morning. it takes weeks to get all the, the so, evidence so and all that. So good, on. good. So this is an agreement in principle. Yeah. You then go away, view some properties and find a property mm -hmm. and go, Paddy, I need to now submit the application. This mm -hmm. is a stage above the agreement in principle. Yeah, no, that's that fine. Takes, but that, takes, that takes a couple of weeks to get you still need to have this chat and get, and get the basics off me and you still have to get, surely you'll, you'll need to know I just thought it would take so just, more. Just yeah. in yeah. principle, yeah. we don't take proof of income, we don't take proof of bank statements, and we don't take um, a, a snapshot of the property because we okay. don't know which property it right. is. There's a level of trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, most people will have a pay slip and we'll ask mm. them to go to just check if there's any additional income on yeah. it, deductions, pension. So they'll be looking at the... And you've got to trust them. You're not going to say prove it and send it. No, but so you, you're not doing a full deep dive to start with. You, you're but, basically but getting... when we go to the bank and press that button, the bank are doing a deep dive, check. They're looking right. at all the background information. This customer can borrow this money if they want to. Yeah. Then you find your property. Then you come to us. Then you panic. I've just spent 100 grand over the weekend, found a house. What do I do next? Panic, panic, panic. That's when we give you a list of documents, three months pay slips, three months bank statements, ID, proof of deposit, all those mm. types of things. Laura will go through your file. That could take potentially a week to look through your file, answer all the questions. Who's this money to David? Who's this money to whatever? Mm. Your pay slip doesn't quite add up. There's a missing pay slip. There's this, this. The ID is expired. Your deposit, we need it to be signed and registered to the lender, not to us. Mm. We'll correct all that, and then the file's ready to go to the lender. We submit that file to the lender today. 28 days, we would expect the mortgage offer. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot quicker than that, minute, to be honest. We've done our job then. Done. Yeah. But the legals have still got to go through. They find out there's a dispute with land on your property you're buying. Yeah. That could delay it for months. It could be The property could be in probate. That could be six months. So when you say to me, can you guarantee I'll be in before December? I can guarantee the mortgage will be ready, but I can't guarantee that your legals, the solicitor, and the person you're buying from because what if they're moving out to a new property, but that property falls through? Mm -hmm. What if the people you're buying off decide not to move? Yeah. What if the people you're buying off who were moving into the property that they're buying, that couple's maybe split up and not, you know, loads and loads of things yeah, can happen yeah, in the course, GM. But if you said to me, the property's empty, they're mm -hmm. ready to go, day one, as soon as we get this mortgage, legal should then probably mm -hmm. take another month. So you're talking the quickest turnaround, two to three months, average turnaround, three to four. Six months on a new build, if the person you're buying off is moving into a new build, they could be waiting nine months for it to be built. Mm. So you've just so you're saying know. three to four months, roughly, <clears throat> from coming in for that first chat to getting in there. Potentially, yeah. Could it's be, not actually that long, is could it? Be, really? Could be quicker. So, you, so yeah, I could get people in December. About October time, we say to customers, don't expect to complete before yeah. Christmas. Because yeah. on the 23rd, all we're doing is, and I don't think we've, yeah. ever, we've never missed a beat where it's been our fault. Um, we've worked with solicitors very closely to the point of helping them get them over the line mm -hmm. and, and probably failed to do so because mm -hmm. of land dredge closing early or whatever. Then we've had to wait till after Christmas. Mm -hmm. Devastating. Yeah, we've already haven't even put the tree up. You know, like mm -hmm. that's, but we, we just, we've learned from day, day one we did this first Christmas. We learn to manage expectations. Yeah, yeah. We'll tell the customer they will not complete before yeah. Christmas. If they do, brilliant. But if not, do not plan to. Yeah. Plan to have your Christmas in your house mm. and then move after the new year. And plus, it, well, from my point of view, you just want you want as little disruption as possible around Christmas. It's but this is why the market anyways, dips. Market yeah. dips. You don't want people viewing your house over Christmas, no. do you? No. Yeah, it's a good way to keep it tidy. Well, if only. <laughs> on, so, then. yeah, so the uh, other one was... Um, remember what my other question was going to be now um how long does it take to do it and you'd asked how much how long it lasts which we couldn't yeah. vary yeah. um it lasts as long as the information stays the same in my yeah. opinion that's that's a rule because it's that in principle you could then lose your job mm. you could then be forced to buy a new car and there's no i take it another sort of question is there's no you're not signing up to anything. It's just an agreement principle. So you're not you're not putting anything down to start with. You're not no. financially losing so, anything some, at all. So some some brokers do charge for that. Do they? We, we right. don't. Um, and we say even if you do get accepted, just like ideally use us because mm. we, we we know you. We want to work with you. But when they walk into the estate agent, there might be another broker there that they have a better connection with. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a service we offer for free. 
okay. um, and it puts them into a position. We think it's just a really powerful and important part of the process, mm -hmm. having that discussion before you go looking. Of course you've looked. No one closes their eyes and goes, well, actually they do. Yeah. But some people close their eyes and go, I don't know a clue. I don't have a clue and I don't know what my budget is. Mm. People have an idea of how much they can afford a month. Yeah. But they, what they don't know is how much that translates into a property purchase. This is my main thing, yeah. yeah. It's kind of... But yeah. how much a thousand pound today versus a thousand pound two years ago was a whole different price of property. Whereas yeah. now you can't afford as much. So your budget can change. And yeah. you're agreeing yeah. with the principal three months later. If, if that had happened enough, let's say you came to us this time last year, but then found the right property in November, mm -hmm. your budget would have had to change or you'd have to reduce the price of property you're purchasing. Absolutely. By about 100, 200 quid a month. It's madness. I, I take it that's the part in me that just wants it to, once I've got it in my head, I want to go, get it done, know that it's all done, it's off my plate. Mm. So this whole thing about this agreement in principle, so, I don't... So yeah. the agreement in principle can secure your product, mm. but that would force you to rush by because it would mm. probably only secure the product for 30 days. So. Now... But it's also stopping you, like you said, when I come back in and you saying, actually, not West are doing this one, mm. you get cheaper. Yeah. But we'll always reevaluate. Yeah. It could be two months down the line. When it comes to purchasing the property and submitting the application, you've locked in then, so the mm -hmm. rates can't change once you've submitted it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the bank middle application say that probably while, what, while you haven't lived in it yet, we're going to put the price up of your product to 100 quid. They, they can't do that. It's secured. It yeah. can expire. So an offer, mortgage offer will be six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't move in within six months, they can ask for new pay slips, bank statements, quite rightly, because the lot can change. Yeah. Um, but we would be well prepared for that, and you would probably be quite frustrated if it was mm. over six months anyway. Yeah. There'll be some sort of issue that's crept up in the pipeline, or you're buying a new build, or someone in the chain is buying a new build. What's the longest, do you think, it's taken you? Oh, from start to finish, mm. I'd say over, over 12 months and two extensions of a mortgage offer. Um, and is that just because something happened with the property or? Um, I think it was probate was involved. Um, right. And that can take forever. Right. Um, it's all about family agreeing. So yeah, yeah. as you can imagine, that can be, mm -hmm. that can be never. And, um, what's, and what's the shortest? Um, do you think? So probably round about five years ago, every lender was firing. Process was slick. Mm. There was less complications in it that weren't brought in because of COVID, because everything was face-to-face. Mm -hmm. -face. Yeah. Um, things could move pretty quick. If a person came in and said, I'm trying to buy a property at auction, can I have a mortgage? We would give it our best shot to get it done within that time period, which is normally six weeks. All right. Um, but it had to be squeaky clean, yeah, yeah, yeah. clear cut. Yeah. Um, that's a whole other ball game, auction properties, because normally they're in need of repair mm. and they're not going to, a lender's not going to be comfortable without a huge deposit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then... Two months would be quick. And quite recently, we had a customer of ours. Um, if they're listening, they'll know who they are. Um, and um, it was slowed down because of the legals. And I remember having to intervene and speak to them about it. Um, they were disappointed in how long it was taken. Mm -hmm. It was physically impossible to go any quicker. Um, but I hadn't explained that when I'd spoken yeah. to them. Just because I kind of like, maybe we were talking about other things, but what I should have said is, these things will take that time. So mortgage-wise, we were done within a week, mortgage mm. offer, and then the legals took about four weeks, which is right, rapid. Okay. If they'd have said to me, we need to be in that property in six weeks' time, I'd have said, you will not be in that property right. in six weeks' time. They proved me wrong because they got in, but we never had that conversation. But I said, you should have said that, guys, because I, I would have mm. said, that I'll never be apologising for not completing this quick, mm. but I apologise that I didn't get that out of you, that that was the time. It was more because of the rental. It's just gauging. Yeah, but like anyone to buy a property, yeah. if the, you came in and said, I need the house, but we have to be in six <clears> weeks because <throat> of school, because of this, because of that, it's not going to happen. Mm. You're going to need to speak to family, get cash, yeah. and rush it through like that with a bridge and loan or something. Mm. Um, but I can try my best, and seven, eight, nine weeks might be mm. achievable. But it all depends. It all depends. Uh, solicitors could have, flings could get flagged up mm. on searches. Um, mortgage company, the value to get out of the property might take a week mm. just to book in the slot because the person selling yeah, the property could be... Yeah, how busy everyone is. Yeah, yeah. And so how, like, how does that compare to remortgaging them? Take a remortgaging is a lot quicker. Yeah. I mean, I think the quickest I got through was two weeks and that was my mum. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. She just left it a little bit too late yeah. um, and we put everything on it and we got it turned around. To be honest, the mortgage side is easy. Again, if we, if we do our job right, it goes mm. in and out. 
but the legals will still take place yeah. and, and the solicitor's got to turn around in two weeks. We've probably done it quicker than that. I don't know. Hmm. Um, Laura would tell me, but I, I just remember typically with my mum's, for one, I felt the pressure and I didn't want it overpaying. Mm. I felt for her. Um, it would never be our fault if we didn't make the deadline, but we got it done in time. She'd have had to pay a higher variable payment. Yeah. Um, God knows why we hadn't done it earlier. Mm. Um, just family, innit? But, it. but mm. we got it turned around and I was chuffed to bits. Um, yeah, she, she sent me yeah. these world beers. So it was, uh, it was right. like 12 world beers. So that's, uh, like, for, thank you from your favourite customer, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Ben. Oh. Be number one fan on social media as well. You well, see, well <laughs> someone has to be, don't they? Um, <laughs> that's his personal social media, obviously. Um, yeah, so I think that's, I think that's that us, it. isn't it? Uh, quite, it quite a boring one, but do you know what? It's, it's the one we get asked. Mm. And people are putting yourself on the back foot because you've got all that to do. And I guarantee you, if you've put that offering on the property, you can't sleep at night thinking, yes, we've got mm. that property. Yeah. Unless you've already spoke to your bank or us, because yeah. how how do you know? Unless you've got the knowledge and that experience within the industry. It, yeah. So, like, I could probably put an mm. offering on a property yeah. before having a certificate. I'd, I'd get one because I know it's going to put me mm. ahead of the, the the queue when putting an offering. Mm. But I would I'd have already known I could afford it because yeah. I've yeah, taught myself. Yeah. And, and you could you, you could probably just have a chat with me and say, do you think we can? Yeah, we can. Yeah, but you still need but the certificate need helps. That extra, yeah. And and do you know what? It puts a footprint on your mm. credit profile. Some people are put off by that. They think that that's going to have a negative effect. I still to this day will argue that footprints on your credit profile won't be the reason that you won't get a mortgage. Right. Yeah. Because obviously they take a, they do a credit search and multiple credit searches affect you. Your, your mm-hmm. credit report. The amount of time someone, it's a good one. We'll remember that for we a minute. We need to write it down. You, the foot, you, doing a credit check will stop mm. you getting a mortgage. Um, of course, it can affect it. Yeah, we can't get away from that one. But what I mean is, what they don't realize when they go to money supermarket and they do a multiple insurance quote, is that the same you'll company? see it on you. We'll, we'll do the credit profile yep. soon, but you'll see it. They'll, they'll register 12 companies or register credit, right. credit checks. Right. And that affects your score. Yeah. Just things like reducing your credit card limit or closing a credit card, like all these little things Add in. make a difference. So asking to borrow money from a mortgage lender and getting declined isn't great for your credit score. No. But it's not big enough to stop everyone lending to you. Right. So most of them will do a soft footprint. So it's a credit check that they see, they will register because this has got mm-hmm. to be an audit trail mm-hmm. and you will see because you want to know who's doing it. But it, the soft footprint doesn't impact the score. Right, a hard okay. footprint, which obviously happens at application and mm-hmm. in some instances at agreement and principle, will affect your credit score. So if you kept doing one every day, you'll lose a point every day and eventually that 999 can reduce. Mm-hmm. But again, that's something that is explainable with common sense to a lender. Yeah. Yes, I know he's had 10 applications, but that was just unlucky because he's applied for 10 properties. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The amounts changed. It's all down to the to the broker. To yeah, we and we will fight your corner. It doesn't mean yeah. that we can get around yeah, it I'm sure someone can bring up a, an example where it actually lost them out on a property mm. in a mortgage that's how much of a minute difference it can make but in theory there's so many other big things that can like mm. using your credit card to take out cash can have an impact like missing a payment um, like taking out a new mobile phone contract mm-hmm. so do you know what it's just life just get on with it just yeah. It. Yeah. Um, but that's where we can support you um, and put you in that position again it's coming back to the pre- previous knowledge that you lot have that mm. over everyone else yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's definitely not one of the dramas that we see so we can no. bust, bust that myth because it's good, yeah. that's what people think mm. quite rightly they but I think, think for this this has been this is it's another part of the great system that we keep talking about which bcreativecompany.co.uk yeah. has done a lot of work on and, and promoting you know, I think it's it's another section on there that I now understand what did what means why why it's such a big and thing then in your author so your, you know in the section we've got mm. dipped uh, we've got Ready information go, waiting got for it. dip we'll yeah. need an id then it's yeah. dip to go yeah. so then dip to go moves on to um dip accept mm-hmm. house hunting or decline refer yeah. which is back to the advisor to do the job again because yeah. not every agreement in principle application goes through goes is a yes mm. sometimes it's a no sometimes it's not sorry not this time mm. sometimes it's we need further information and we go back to the drawing board and we'll yeah. try. But honestly, nationwide, NatWest can knock a customer back for credit and say, no, no. Mm. Nothing's wrong. Affordability fits. Criteria is perfect. We'll go to Halifax. Yep. 
in the background, the lenders have like a, um, a level of expectation mm. and they'll have set the parameters that day to, their own to matrix a benchmark. Only, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if they are busy, they can hire that because right. they, they, they want the, the cream de la creme. It's mad, isn't it? And, but we don't get told what that is. Yeah. So when I go to Halifax for yeah. you and you get knocked back, it's like, what? But we know that nationwide actually mm. might have a greater appetite. Product's probably better. Yeah. It's just it's just an odd system, but we've got faith in it because yeah. we will not be disheartened when you get knocked back from Halifax for a decline in 95%. We'll just try another lender. Yeah. And that sounds so relaxed. I'm just trying another lender. Well, that's good, though. It's good for because me to know, know that it's... Yeah, yeah. exactly. It? I mean, if I said you, you've declined and that's it. Hmm. What you do know? you do? Yeah. I mean, Whereas, you forget about the house. When, when does that happen, Baz? We've had yeah. this on the podcast before. You walk into your bank and they say no. People don't buy a property. Mm. They don't come to a broker and go, yeah. this is my predicament. NatWest have said no at 95%. Nationwide have said no at 95%. Do you know why that is? They don't lend on flats mm. above 85%. Here you go. NatWest said yes. Yeah. Made it sound easy, didn't it? Brilliant. Right. So that's the myth busted. No, that's a good one, that. I quite enjoyed that. Episode 12 done. Myth busted. Myth busted. Um, you don't need a mortgage until you found a property. Couldn't be more wrong. Not just busting the myth. You couldn't be more wrong because you're doing things the wrong way and you haven't prepared. Mm-hmm. Unless you are a mortgage guru and all over your finances, then I, I take that back. You're allowed, you're allowed to do what you want. But let's say the 99% of you are out there. Definitely no, we're not, we're not doing caveats on these myths. We're just saying no, you That's do it. need it. Busted, yeah. done. Yeah. Great to speak to you. We're on Spotify um, and I believe a few other channels right now. So please leave a review. I think more importantly for me and Baz, um, the feedback, we, we've got thick skin. Give us it. Um, Not too thick. but it, It's, yeah. it, it's designed. This is designed for a customer, um, not the market, not another mortgage broker. It's designed for people that maybe have thought this through before and want to listen and educate themselves. But more importantly, when it comes to we want your myths. We want to know. Mm, Chuck's we question, struggle yeah. to find these. We could have a brainstorming session and we could create, we get the next 20 episodes ready. But we struggle to find them because we need to know what, what you're being told out there, or what you're thinking out there to be able to come back at you with because everything can be busted. And if it can't be, then it, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to make a comment on that too. During these podcasts, I hope we do that. I hope when we're talking, we'll talk about things that actually you'll think, mm. oh, I didn't know if that was true or not. But it is. But there's many, many more to come. Episode 12. Um, we'll celebrate when we get to episode 100. Oof, we <laughs> we'll, do a, we'll do a live video podcast. Yeah. That's, that'll be our first one. Great Sounds to have you good. guys. Yeah, thanks very much. Time. Cheers. Bye-bye.